Hey everybody, Anne here, and if you watched yesterday's episode, you know that I got some bad news about the van. Well, I blame it on myself for not being more careful and buying yet another vehicle, and for blindly trusting someone whose sole intent is to sell a vehicle at all costs, even if it means resorting to scurrilous measures, such as removing the check engine light bulb. Apparently, that's a common thing done by online vehicle sellers in order to get people to feel safe enough to buy the vehicle, despite it having possibly catastrophic problems. The saving grace for me is that the issues aren't catastrophic. But the only thing I did right in all this was choosing a van with that particular engine. Everything else surrounding the van could crumble and I'd still have a good engine. The amount of money I spent on the van would purchase that engine alone. So good. I'll talk more about the repairs and costs and whatnot tomorrow or the next day. The news isn't as bad as I thought. In fact, I was able to turn the table, so to speak. More later on that. But seeing as how I was feeling pretty horrible, my friend and I decided to carry on with our date anyway. We went ahead and had a little thrift therapy. And to be honest, it's just what I needed to lift me up a little. Even if I didn't find anything I really couldn't live without, I knew that thrift store shopping always lifts my spirit. <laughs> well, ain't that the truth? The first thing we gotta talk about is the rules. There are rules to thrift store shopping that you better follow or else, especially if the store is crowded. Rule number one, if you're walking through an aisle, don't just push through or past another shopper who's intently focused on a particular item. You don't want to mess with their thrifting mojo. It's like throwing ice cold water on your meat while in the midst of, well, you know. Stand there patiently, but more importantly, silently. Once they've peered at their gorgeous piece of merchandise long enough to satisfy their needs, they'll take notice of you and move out of the way. You've just successfully avoided loss of life or limb, or at the very least, an icy stare. Rule number two, if you're walking towards the end of an aisle and are getting ready to make a turn, don't expect that the person walking past your aisle is paying attention to you. Be a good thrifter by pausing for a moment before before you make your turn because the other shopper may have their eyes locked onto a piece of merchandise they simply cannot live without. You don't want to hit them with your cart, but more importantly, you don't want them to lose sight of the object of their desire. Number three, navigate the store with roguelike stealth, never letting other thrifters know what you're looking at. I like to wear a ball cap pulled down so you can't see my eyes because once another thrifter sees what you see, it may escalate into a feeding frenzy. What's she looking at? That looks pretty cool. I'm going to go get it for myself. Like hungry wolves, thrifters will literally fight to the death to get all those lovely pieces of meat scattered all over the store. Move slowly but deliberately. Then you'll get out of there with a pile of cool stuff and your life. Rule number four, look inside things to make sure they've got all their parts and that those parts fit. Rule number five, just because you like the artwork done by a particular weirdo artist because they're probably weirder than even you, it doesn't mean that you have to buy that crappy old frame with his image in it. Rule number six, even if it's something you really need, make them practically give it to you price-wise. If it's outside your spending limit per item or per day, then don't get it. I don't know, are you? Look at that saw. That's a saw, eh? Check this out. It's a saw. You're seeing to see what you're doing. Holy. Here, you don't want to cut yourself. Charger. Battery charger. It comes There's with a drill. drill. I've already got a drill, but you know what? This one's a better one. All right, let's see how much this baby costs. I think it's hard to weld it the last time, but I bet you couldn't. Rule number seven, many things will have nostalgic value for you. Unless you're a collector of such items, don't buy them. Then let them gather dust in your home. It may remind you of your childhood, but it disrespects the item if it's sitting around without anyone really enjoying it. Wow. What is that? Hi, doodly dee. Hi, doodly dee. Remember that song? <laughs> oh, Nokio. Oh my god, what's this one? Give it a little whistle. Oh Ooh, my this god. Is Pinocchio. This is cooler than the other one up front. Remember Pinocchio? Yeah, remember to give it a little whistle. Oh my god. <laughs> 
I put the links to the videos of the Pinocchio songs below. Didn't want to get a channel strike for or a copyright violation. Anyhow, what did I end up with myself? A few cool things that I've been looking for and were on my list of must-haves for tiny living. I got this pressure cooker for $7.99. It pressure can about six pints at once, just the right size for a single burner cooktop. My shopping buddy found this for me and it's only 99 cents so yep I got it. Perfect size for single servings of soup or stew or whatever without having to worry about what to do with the leftovers. I wanted a crock pot but not just a warmer so I could slow cook small portions while I'm driving around for work. This one has three settings so it's going to be perfect. I'm testing it out today in fact I'll let you know how it went. I love tea lights that come with the plastic cups. I got some candle holders that are encased in glass that look like old lanterns that I can use them in. Then I can fill them with old wax from scented wax melts I've used and make new candles. I got all these for 99 cents. I love purses with really long straps so I can wear them strapped around my body kind of like a messenger's bag. Not sure what they're called, but my current purse's zipper is broken, so it was time for a new one. This one is perfect and only $1.99, and it's got a configuration that's perfect for my needs. Yep, I knew I'd eventually need at least one of these. $6.99? It looked brand new, so I got it. Turns out they sell for $9.99 on Amazon for the exact same hose by the same company, so I got a few bucks off. So nice people out there in internet land, thanks so much for the encouragement and kind thoughts on my tearful episode yesterday. I feel better now. Things are going to work out. I'm still going to get my van built. I'm still going to go on my adventure. So stick around. I'll have more information on the van's repairs. So hopefully I'll have good news for the next video. Thanks for watching everybody. And thanks for the positive energy. Believe me, I've needed it. If you liked watching me go through my thrift therapy session, please give me some thumb action. Okay, that sounded dirty. And subscribe and ring my bell because you're not going to believe what happens next.